Good evening and welcome to the uh, Viterbi Live broadcast here and uh, some of the folks that we have joining us today. This is a specific invite only uh, live chat that we're doing via Google Plus for all of our admitted students in Northern California. Uh, we know that you have a number of different choices when it comes to choosing the university that you will attend this fall, so we wanted to talk to you directly. Uh, my name is Paul Ledesma. I'm the Director of Undergraduate Admission here for the Viterbi School of Engineering. Um, I'm actually in my home office right now, so I get my mate at home. I'm not <laughs> in my office at work. And uh, we have a few of our alums that are based in Northern California uh, here to talk to you about their experiences, here to answer your questions live. So on the page that you're viewing this on, you can scroll to the bottom there and you can post questions. We'll be going to those questions live for the next hour. Uh, so if you have questions that you want to get asked, a few of you already asked them. I saw Brent is in there, Rob is in there asking some questions, which is great. We'll get to them in a second. But without further ado, I want to introduce some of our alumni who have made their, themselves available tonight in our broadcast. Uh, and we'll have them introduce themselves, tell about uh, uh, where they're from and what they did at USC and now what they're doing uh, now that they're based in Northern California. So Craig, why don't we, because you're on the left of my screen, why don't we start with you, Craig? Sure. Um, hey everybody, my name is Craig Lester and I graduated in uh, 2011, so a couple years ago now. Um, I'm originally from Peachtree City, Georgia. I, um, let's see, when I, was, uh, when I was a student at USC, I was uh, pretty heavily involved in the Engineers Without Borders program. So we were working to um, bring fresh water to a village in Honduras. Um, I was also involved in undergraduate research. I interned at uh, JPL uh, during my time at USC, and then after I graduated, I was a uh, became a uh, loose scholar. So I spent a year living in uh, Taipei, Taiwan, and now I'm at Stanford uh, as a first year graduate student in mechanical engineering, um, and then interning at SpaceX this summer. That's kind of what's my life for the past few years. <laughs> cool. I like you just kind of casually threw in that you're a loose scholar for those of you watching. <laughs> That's a huge deal. Uh, <laughs> fantastic award winner, and, and Craig's done some amazing stuff. So Thank you. Thanks, Craig. Are you enjoying your time at Stanford right now as a graduate student? Absolutely. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, cool. uh, it's a good time. All right. David. Sure. So hi, everyone. I'm David. Um, I'm originally from the Bay Area. I spent some time in Berkeley and then went to high school in Marin County. Um, I graduated in 2011 like Craig. I majored in computer science and business administration. At USC, I was very involved in ACM, which is uh, the Association for Computing Machinery, the student group for uh, students interested in computer science. And so I would help organize programming contests, and we would do all sorts of fun, different events related to computer science. Um, at USC, I got very involved in making iPhone applications. And I eventually started a, a company where we make iPhone apps. Um, so now I live in, uh, in San Francisco, and um, I work full-time with, with the company that I started with, a, with some friends from Viterbi. Uh, so the company is called Embark. Um, if any of you have ever taken the BART, if you've ever used an app for it called iBART, that's us. Um, I wrote the code for that. Now we have a, a bunch of apps. We, I think we have about uh, two, million, 2 million or so users now. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of the gist of it. I graduated two years ago, yeah. and now I'm living in, in San Francisco. Yeah, totally cool. And uh, just a self-plug, I use David's apps all the time. Uh, I use it in Philly, I use it in D.C., I use it in New York, uh, I use it in San Francisco, I use iBart all the time. So I, I'm personally addicted to them as transit apps. They're, they're awesome and uh, really good stuff. Thanks, David. Uh, Jenny, and special shout-out to Jenny. She is actually broadcasting from Raleigh, North Carolina, because she's out there so it's late where she is right now, but she's based in, in Northern California. Jenny, go for it. Sure. Hi, guys. So I'm originally from Sacramento, California, and I graduated from USC Viterbi in 2007 uh, with a bachelor's in industrial systems engineering. I was heavily involved uh, with quite a couple of organizations, Society of Women Engineers, uh, Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers was a huge passion of mine, um, did a lot of activities throughout college in those organizations and then my senior year I was the Viterbi Student Council President and hosted activities such as our engineering talent show 
show our Viterbi Ball, which is one of the biggest events of the year, and try to make engineering uh, fun from a, a social perspective. After graduation, I moved to Raleigh, North Carolina for a year with Cisco Systems. I got a, a, a position as a systems engineer in their sales division, and I moved to RTP to do a training program out here. Um, after that, I moved back to Los Angeles to do a systems engineering role, a field-facing role, which is what I've been doing for the past uh, five years. And I recently, a month ago, moved back up to Northern California, so making my way back up home, back home back north um, for a new position where I'm actually back in the uh, in the training program and I'm a trainer for engineers so I'm taking all of my experience of being a field SC and training the new generation of college grads that are coming to Cisco before they go out into a field facing role uh, which is why I'm back here in RTP for training for about a month um, I'll be flying to Amsterdam in May um, probably Asia in a couple months so it's it's really fun it's a global role and I'm really excited to make that transition Wow you're just everywhere we're not, are we gonna see you on campus anytime soon um, hopefully I'll be back in LA this coming weekend actually so I'm living out of a suitcase right now but <laughs> <laughs> I'll be around great cool and uh, Tracy last but not least um, hi, I'm Tracy Dooley. I graduated from Viterbi, actually, before it was Viterbi, back in 2002, as a biomedical engineering major, and I also did an econ minor. Um, when I was at Viterbi, um, I was involved in the student ambassador group, uh, similar to Jenny, and also the Associated Students of Biomedical Engineering and Tau Beta Pi, but also did a number of things outside of that, like with the Trojan Investing Club and research and things like that. Um, I, after I graduated, I was actually one of the biomedical engineering students who decided they still wanted to go to med school after seeing all the cool stuff that you could do in industry. So I went to med school at Stanford. I graduated from that program in 2007, but um, because I was in the valley, I really did see where I could um, use my engineering background to sort of go into industry and help bring really amazing products to help impact people. So didn't clinically practice, and now I have a really expensive piece of paper with my name on it. But uh, I did a stint in uh, healthcare investment banking doing M&A here in San Francisco, and then came to Novartis, which is a pharma company. And right now I am their director of global training education. So um, I run a global group of engineers and support specialists and people like that, um, who, similar to Jenny, you know, we're sort of um, teaching the new future generations how to um, really have a great impact on people's lives. So similar to Jenny, I was also in uh, um, Europe and Asia, do a lot of travel actually, but was lucky enough to be able to come back down to um, campus a couple weeks ago. So. Yeah, yeah, it was good to see you then. Yeah. Um, I, uh, we also had a few other alums that were, were scheduled to join us, but they, they send their regrets due to some other uh, just kind of job commitments at the last minute. They had to cancel Amy Lynn, one of the co-founders of Ed Canvas. If you haven't checked them out, edcanvas.com or .org.com. I think uh, Ed Canvas, look them up, E-D-C-A-N-V-A-S. Amy is, is uh, unfortunately couldn't join us tonight because she had an investor dinner. Uh, and also Reed Doucette is a partner there at, or one of the consultants at uh, McKinsey and Company was unable to join us at the last minute. And then Farzana Ansari, who's a PhD candidate in Berkeley in mechanical engineering, got her undergraduate degree at USC in biomedical engineering. Uh, she had to cancel last minute because she's presenting at a conference tomorrow morning. Had to do some extra work, so they send their regrets. But we, we had a few others scheduled. They just they unfortunately just really really busy. So uh, I I told our alums before we went on air. I have to apologize because I'm in my home office, which means my dog is is joining me here as well. And you might hear her snoring every once in a while. She's uh <laughs> she's behind me on this on this couch over here. So uh, I don't know if I can show you all uh, when we get there. <laughs> But there she is. Uh, she's she's snoring pretty loudly. I can hear her. So if you hear her, it's not me snoring. It's, it's my dog. Um, so anyway, uh, we got a bunch of questions. First question comes from Michaela. And Michaela was asking about summer internship opportunities. And she wants to know if there's any available. And yes, the answer to Michaela is yes. There's, uh, internship opportunities are available all over the place. And of course, a lot of engineering companies are based in Northern California. You know, 
whether that's the Silicon Valley or whether that's even places directly in San Francisco or even in East Bay. There's a lot of different companies out there that are looking to hire interns uh, specifically from USC, whether that be in the tech industry or the biomed industry or whatever it's going to be. But I'm curious from our alums what your experience was in working with our career services office and working with the ideas of trying to find those internships as an undergraduate student, your practical real life work experience as a student, and um, where that kind of got you to the point that you're at today. Uh, Anyone any want to take that first? I can start. Um, sure. So I mentioned I had a couple internships, uh, or this coming summer I'll be working at SpaceX, and then my junior year, after my junior year, I worked at JPL. Um, and those actually, uh, I, I use the Career Center, and the Career Center is absolutely um, awesome for hooking you up with jobs with internships. Um, and the resources they have there are great. Um, the career fairs that are on campus are also, um, it, there's a ton of employers there all the time. Um, but <clears throat> for my particular, uh, the, the path that I followed, I actually, it was through a TA that I had. I just started talking to him. Uh, about things I was interested in, and um, he sort of hooked me up with this position at JPL, and that actually led directly into um, my work at SpaceX because I'm working for the same guy. So uh, it was kind of more the network that opened it up for me, um, even though everything else there is is fantastic. But the the network that was opened up by the opportunities at USC uh, worked out really well for me too. Great. Thanks, Chris. I was going to say that within computer science, there seems to be an overwhelming number of internship opportunities available. From so from my angle, I often would see employers come to ACM, which is the, the computer science student organization, and ask to, to like basically come to the con the programming contest that we put on, or come to our career fair, uh, or come to the Viterbi career fair just to meet computer science students. And so I just wanted to say, like, all my friends in computer science had uh, had internships every single year, um, or every every single summer, and there there seemed to be a lot of opportunities available, either just via the net, like just existing network, or via career, career services, or uh, the the career, the Viterbi career fair. Cool. Thanks. I'm going to put you on the spot, David. Are you going to be hiring some interns for Embark? Uh, maybe. Actually, we, we, we're talking about that. We're, we're a little late to the game this year. So last year, at this point, we had already committed to an intern. This year, we haven't decided if we're going to do it. Um, we, we might. Actually, <laughs> awesome, good stuff. Sorry to put you on the spot. No, that's all right. Anyone else? I want to add to that. Yeah, actually, so part of my role and and previously as well, I do a lot of recruiting. Specifically, I go back to USC and try to recruit the best right, for Cisco. And I would say that as a recruiter, I think what's really unique about Viterbi is that we have our own career services um, across the board at other universities. I, I don't know if they have that dedicated group for the individual engineers. And I think that's really unique that Viterbi offers a place to go that's specific for engineers and recruiters that are trying to recruit engineers as well as the actual conference you know instead of going to um, the career conference or the career fair for example where you have competition with business students or you know other majors this is a dedicated conference for engineering students and I think that's really unique of the Turby as a recruiter myself I think that's the best way for us to really find talent at USC and have that, that dedicated place to go and, and find that um, myself, I did an internship after my freshman year, and it was great to get that hands-on experience and understand what industrial and systems engineering was all about before getting into my ISC classes. So I think you know, getting started and, and having an internship is almost like a um, a requirement these days for a lot of folks that are that are looking to hire. Even when you graduate as a senior, they look back and see what internship opportunities you've had and which ones you've taken on and it's always a good way to figure out what you want to do because you can go many different career paths. I never thought that I was going to go into IT or, or technology for example and, and that's what I ended up doing but realizing after my first internship that that's the career path I wanted to take was really key for, for me. Cool. Thanks, Shane. Tracy, I don't know, we, those were all great answers. You kind of just, yeah. anyone want to throw anything on there? Um, sure. I'll just sort of um, do this from more of a recruiting perspective as well. I think um, not only is the internship um, really important, and it's it, and the career services at USC do a really great job of placing you, but um, I think, again, from the recruiting and the hiring perspective, looking at engineers 
um, USC Viterbi has a real reputation of bringing out students who A, know how to get things done, who can work collaboratively with others, and who are really dedicated and have that real world experience. And I can tell you, I mean, um, there are certain universities in Northern California that will not be named where we see that on a resume and it's actually kind of a deterrent because, um, you know, there's sort of an expectation that, you know, they come in and they already know everything. And I think that um, seeing the USC Viterbi name on a resume actually is a big plus for people. And so, so when you're, you're when you're recruiting, you see a difference between or you have different expectations for USC students coming out of USC than other universities. Yes, and I think that's been borne out by people who have also not gone to USC as well. They see that USC students have a much better grasp on what the real world is like and what kind of, and they're much better prepared with the skills and sort of um, not even just the technical knowledge, but the soft skills as well and the ability to work um, with other teams and, and projects. So okay. I think that's a huge selling point. That's, that's really good to hear because I know that one of the things, I mean, our main, one of our main focuses is the idea of collaboration and, and getting work and in, in, in to, to get to work in groups right from day one and the idea is that communication is key in understanding how to explain your ideas, uh, not only to other technical folk, but to non-technical folk is a big deal. Um, and uh, I think that's one of the things I found, not only in, in each of you, obviously, but in our, in our current students, is that everybody just likes working together. And I, I think that's it's great to hear that you're seeing that from a recruiter standpoint when you're going out to hire other students as well. That's really cool. Um, we, uh, we have a question from Brent, and Brent asked a question about EE and computer science coursework. And Brent, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say I'm ignoring your question, but I'm going to answer your question directly because you get pretty specific as far as courses and the ideas of EE and computer science. And I'm going to talk to you specifically later, so I'm going to email you at the email address that you submitted. And uh, we could talk a little bit more specifically uh, about that. So, Brent, I'm not ignoring you, but it, it's just a pretty specific. Um, Rob, and Rob uh, is asking some questions, uh, which I, I love here. He's got a ton of questions here. Rob, we're going to kind of go back and forth between your questions to give everybody a chance to ask because we got a ton here. But, Rob, you're asking about social life. And I think that this is a fantastic question. Um, basically, guys, for anyone to jump in, or actually, Trace, let's give you the first job because you, you, you went last because uh, of the <laughs> Uh, hang out here. But well, um, did you have a social life? Are you are you just a giant nerd, Tracy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got me there. <laughs> no, I mean, Viterbi was incredible. You know, I mean, I know it's kind of a cliche to say work hard, play hard, but really, I mean, you you can have the best of both worlds. I mean, I have amazing friends who I'm still really close to um, from Viterbi, and I mean, it's you know the stuff that you work on there, and you know you know, the, the opportunities that you have to have a social life there. I mean, LA is one of the, the most vibrant um, communities, you know, and me growing up in the Bay Area, you know, in Berkeley and San Francisco, I mean, that's, you know, that's not, <laughs> you know, sort of the middle of nowhere. So I think there are fantastic opportunities there. We had a lot of fun. I mean, there's football, obviously, but you can take advantage of the beach and then going down to San Diego even further and, you know, LA Metro. So, I mean, the social life there was incredible. So, okay, cool. I found myself going back down from Northern California, actually. <laughs> and I guess uh, for everyone else in, in, to think about this a little bit more completely, because Rob asked some more questions in his email, in his question submission, is what what is what does your typical weekend look like as a USC student? And then if you can compare that to the ideas of Northern California, and also um, uh, does this mean as an engineering student at USC you only hung out with engineering students? Uh, how does that work? Uh, basically, give them a sense of what your life was like. I can kind of jump in here a little bit. So um, I, I don't think I mentioned this earlier. I was also on the triathlon team. And so one of the points I wanted to make was there are all so like people interested in all sorts of things at USC, and you have all sorts of opportunities to meet them. So I would say maybe one third of my friends were in Viterbi and two thirds elsewhere. I had a lot of really good friends in Viterbi, but I had a lot of friends from, from the triathlon team or from other classes. So. Um, I don't know if this is like a perfectly typical weekend, but um, you know, often on a Saturday we would go do something, you know, go to some str strange location with the triathlon team to you know do a workout, or maybe I'd get up super early to go on a like ocean swim or something, um, and we you know we do some kind of intense workout. Then I'd come back, maybe hang out with a few like friends I met from uh, my my dorm freshman year. Um, like usually 
I mean, the weekend sometimes starts Thursday night, depending on how your schedule works out. But you know, usually, I don't know. Maybe I'd go to one of Craig's parties. We we knew each other. <laughs> um, I like. I don't know if there's really a typical weekend for me, but it, it definitely wasn't like always filled with work. I mean, there there were times like there. I, I will admit, like there there were a few weekends where it's like, ah, oh, shit, I just have to get a lot of work done. Excuse right. my language there, um, but. I like we were able to have a lot of fun. Great. Uh, I, was... I just want to say that you can't beat SoCal weather because the weather now being back in Northern California, I miss SoCal weather, and the weather just allows for any kind of social life, right? I mean, there's so many things to do, um, whether it's like beach activities or just you know hanging out in different parts of LA. There's I'm I'm a big foodie, so there's tons of restaurants and different, you know, um, kinds of foods that are out there, international foods and different districts within L.A. that I think there's just so many opportunities to um, explore the city. And USC actually has some activities. I think there was a club uh, where you can go to different restaurants every weekend and explore different parts of L.A. Uh, that way. But the weather, I would say, is the biggest factor in allowing for a social life, and it is what you make out of it. Sometimes I think it's balancing social with the work of being an engineer. I know for me, a lot of my social life revolved around the clubs or activities that I was in, and a lot of my friends were in engineering, but I think it's also important to have friends outside of that, too, and my roommate was not an engineer, and I think having that balance of different groups and knowing people from different parts of campus is really good, so you get different perspectives and, and different aspects of your social life, but student-led activities at Viterbi allow for a tremendous um, amount of activities that you can get involved in, just speaking off of student council and what we try to do. Uh, like I mentioned, the engineering talent show, that I'm sure that still happens today. That's an annual tradition. allows people outside of Viterbi to come and see all the talent that is at Viterbi. It um, allows engineers to, you know, play music, do com comedy skits, different things like that. And then we have the engineering week where we have uh, the Viterbi Ball where engineers can go to one of the best clubs in Hollywood and just have a good time. So I think there's a lot of activities that Viterbi has as well as um, other things in engineering and USC in general just because we're in the best city I think in California. So just, other than San Francisco. <laughs> just, just jump in here because I know Craig wants to say something as well but um, the talent show this year, Jenny, if you haven't looked at it or if anybody else wants to look at this, um, ASBME, the Associate Students of Biomedical Engineering, did a dance battle, and it's an epic, like, 10-minute long dance video. Oh, it's amazing. Like, just look at ASBME's Twitter account. You can see the video. Uh, I'm sure Steve Wolfson is watching. <laughs> he was a big, big, uh, big leader of this, but uh, you should check this out because there was some amazing stuff that happened in the talent show this year. Uh, but Craig, I'm sorry for interrupting. I, I will definitely check that out. <laughs> um, so, quick plug for Viterbi Abroad, which was probably the best summer of my life. That actually facilitated a lot of, uh, kind of led to a lot of my social experiences later on in college. Um, it's a summer where um, US, or, uh, where Viterbi flies a bunch of students over to, uh, I guess, what are we? What cities do we have now? We have Madrid. We're, um, we're all over the place. So the overseas program that you went on, and also David went on, and also Jenny went on, uh, is we, we rotate through Rome, Florence, Madrid, Paris, London, possible expansion into other cities in Europe. Um, and then we have Ipodia that's been going through um, Beijing, China, Taipei, yeah. Taiwan, expansion into Germany, expansion into uh, Korea as well. Uh, and then there's, of course, more overseas programs than that. That's just a few of them that, that we run, but there's a lot. So there are definitely opportunities for abroad experiences, and that's what <laughs> my, uh, my abroad experience after freshman year and uh, sophomore year led to a lot of my sort of stronger friendships later on in college. Um, and as you guys, I think, all said, um, I, I met people through orientation. I met people through classes uh, in different parts of the school. I took classes in business, and I took classes in Chinese and film. Um, so I, I met people uh, through those means as well, in addition to my engineering classes. So um, I, I tried to sort of keep a broad network of people across the school, and, and Viterbi really encourages you to sort of get out and meet people outside of outside of your home base. Um, my typical weekend usually worked in the beach uh, when we could fit it in. 
Um, and definitely take advantage of the city. Uh, I, I love the little cultural centers, as I think uh, China, I think as, as you were mentioning, um, little cultural uh, centers around LA. With um, you know, you've got uh, Mexican food, you've got Korean food, you've got Ethiopian food, you have Armenian food, you have absolutely everything you can think of, and I'm I'm all about that. So we we try to take advantage of that as well. Um, and now uh, downtown is coming further and further towards USC too. So um, and and downtown is getting really, really fun, and it's right, you know, next door. So uh, cool. my junior, senior year, we made it down there quite a bit, too. Cool. So, uh, Greg, you were in Madrid. David, you went to Paris. And Jenny, you went to Rome? Yeah. No, Madrid. Rome, yeah, okay. Um, and so, basically, all of you brought up some sort of level of culture, some sort of food thing, and, and culture and food, and, and Jenny, I'm a big foodie myself. Um, uh, you guys let me think of another question. Uh, if you were to recommend one place to eat in LA because there's so many different things going on. Uh, what like, or like, or you guys are going to come back to LA for a weekend. What's the place you have to hit up? And, and Craig, I'm still holding you to that. We had a plan back in the day to go <laughs> eat a meat, like a tray full of meat at Robin's barbecue. We still haven't done that. So one of these days you're going to, you're going to take me up on that offer again. I'm down there this summer. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so place, place to places to eat. What's the best, what's the best food in LA? And Jenny, I'm, you know, I'm not going to let you might, you might want to say this, but I'm going to say it right away because one of my favorite places is Poya Inca, and I know you introduced me to that with Peruvian food. <laughs> You're going to say that? I, yeah, I was. I was going to say that because I was going to say I'm a little biased because I'm Peruvian, and when I moved down to LA, the first thing I looked for was the Peruvian restaurant, and since freshman year, that became the hangout for my group of friends. And um, actually, one of the organizations I was involved in are our yearly alumni dinner was at El Pollo Inca. So, <laughs> awesome. Uh, every Friday and Saturday, they have salsa lessons. Salsa lessons for five bucks uh, for about an hour, and then they have a DJ and full-on salsa dancing, uh, as well as delicious Peruvian food. So that was one of my favorite spots, and I actually still miss it. <laughs> it's awesome. uh, it's good stuff, but yeah, I, I'm a little biased. Peruvian food is always going to be at the top of my list. <laughs> I imagine. Anyone else? Any other ideas? It's got Can two we ideas. Have this call, just one. I, I, <laughs> I, I know. I got to make you pick one. Well, if you quickly do, do a few, that's <laughs> fine. But we got other questions. To move on. Okay, to. so I'll jump in. Um, Cieno Trattoria by the beach in Marina del Rey. Awesome, awesome garlic knots. They don't take reservations, and they they can get away with it because they're so popular. But great yeah. family style Italian with um, sangria, you know, um, self serve and everything. Great place. But for atmosphere, brunch at the Getty. Um, amazing, amazing view. Yeah. So that would be another one. Culture plus food. Awesome. Cantor's Deli. Cantor's on Fairfax. My favorite, favorite deli. Awesome, the classic Hollywood place. And uh, Bloodsoe's Barbecue, if you drive south in the 110, best Texas barbecue you've ever had. Um, and uh, El Tepeyac Burritos, El Tepeyac in, in Boyle Heights has a, a burrito that's like the size of a small child. And it was on Man vs. Food, I went there. And I did it, and I got a free shirt. <laughs> so, definitely recommend it. <laughs> That's awesome. Way to go. Way to go, Craig. I can always count on Craig for large, massive amounts of food to be at any point. Craig and I, I think, consumed every possible animal at once while we were in Madrid, Spain, uh, including ox, including venison, including there was one, one meal in Madrid, and that was, that was amazing. So we connected. All, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we have, a, not to get back to the questions, I, I was distracted, um, but... Uh, question here uh, about the idea of um, BME students going to medical school, and uh, I imagine that this is probably best answered by Tracy, um, but uh, the ideas of what was the experience? BMEs going into medical school, how successful were they, and um, the student is trying, he didn't leave his name, or she didn't leave her name. Um, but she, she's, I think she's trying to figure out how good of a chance does she get into good medical schools like UC San Francisco, Johns Hopkins, etc. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Tracy, your, your thoughts on BMEs as preparatory track towards medical school. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I will say actually that I was on the, um, in the incoming student recruiting committee when I was at Stanford as well for the med school. So I can speak to this from both sides. And I can tell you that being an engineer going into medical school is a definite plus. I mean, um, 
you know, medical school is portrayed many different ways on TV, you know, it's, <laughs> the people aren't nearly as pretty as on Grey's Anatomy, but, you know, um, we, <laughs> the clubs. Um, but, uh, so, a lot of people come in um, with a bio degree, things like that, and so they're competing on... Bio, their you mean like biological sciences, like biology? Exactly. Biolog biological sciences, life sciences, um, you know, a, a liberal arts, you know, type of degree. Right, and that's something that um, you know we see a lot of, and people are competing on their GPA and things like that. But you know what you really learn in medical school is not just how to regurgitate facts. You learn how to take all that vocabulary and all those facts that you're learning in the first two years, and you have to put those together in new and different ways every single second of every single day. And so the engineering mindset really sets you up to do that because it's not about how much information can you put into your brain? It's about what can you do with all the information that's available to you at your fingertips, and how can you use it right then and right there? So I think that that mindset is something that's really useful in medicine, and that's something that we are actually really very positively looked upon by recruiting committees. I mean, it really made people stand out. So. Yeah, I mean, and correct me if I'm wrong, Tracy, but one of the things that I'm, I work with, we have a lot of students that are trying to debate between this idea of well, should I be a biomedical engineer or a biology major? Because I think I could probably get better grades mm. as a biology major. And uh, the, the thing that I, I, I know of medical committees is, yeah, you, you got to get straight A's as a biology major because you got to stand else. out somehow. Yeah. But as a biomedical yeah. engineer, you're already standing out. And we have students that are far more successful in the medical school application field, uh, or the medical school application process, because they're biomedical engineers, because they know they have a different skill set than just kind of just the basic routine ideas of biology and re regurgitating facts. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you know, if, if you're there in the emergency room, you don't want somebody necessarily who's just gotten 100% on their test, right? You want somebody who has the information that's accessible right there and who can actually save the person, you know, not who's just going to be able to say, oh, well, I know what's going right. to work, but I can't actually do it. And actually, my year, there were two, um, um, I was not the only um, woman from USC, biomedical engineering, to go to Stanford. There were two of us in an entering class of 86. So that's a pretty good percentage. That's a great percentage. Yeah, we find that students um, get into be better medical schools with lower GPAs with a BME background than students that are, that are studying biology because they have analytical skill sets. They're problem solvers. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and I mean, my GPA was like, 3.85, right? And I mean, I would have had to have pretty much a 4.0 as a bio major to really stand out in the crowd, even with all the other stuff I did. And being an engineer, frankly, allowed me to meet a bunch of other people. I, I, was, in, I was a resident advisor at the uh, New York Film Academy the summer between, um, engine, uh, after graduating med school, you know? So I got to do all this fun stuff that I probably wouldn't have been able to focus on if I, was, I had to be hitting the books all the time and just worried about my GPA. That's great. That's great. Um, once again, we have, if you're just joining us, we have a number of different alum, alums that are here, you know, kind of just answering your questions as best we can. If you'd like to ask a question, at the bottom of this page on this Northern California live chat page, there's question submission. Go ahead and throw them in. I'm trying to jump around and, and get as many questions answered as possible as we get through this. Um, there's, a, there's a great question here. Someone was anonymous, didn't want to be identified, so they, they're completely blank, so I can't do a shout out to them. Uh, but they asked a question about, in graduate school, did you feel as prepared or more prepared than people that went to other good engineering schools? Um, you know, is there a difference in the education, or what do you think that difference is? For those of you, like Craig, that's a great example. Let's go for you, because you're at Stanford right now. Yeah, yeah, I think in terms of the, uh, the skills and the classes, I, I think that your classes are going to be pretty comparable across all your good engineering schools. I think what what USC and Viterbi did for me specifically when I kind of think about this sort of thing is um, it, it gave me the breadth that I came to USC in, in search of. That was one big thing that sort of brought me to USC to begin with was the fact that I could take classes in different areas, I could get you know, a kind of a, a broad range of experiences. Um, and I think in that respect, I'm, I, I mean, I think I'm well prepared <laughs> for that for that kind of a thing uh, at, at a place like Stanford. Um, I think once you get up into your top tier engineering schools, um, that a lot of the the content that you're getting probably is going to be uh, relatively similar. Um, and USC did the it definitely has the breadth down um, and the depth, but the breadth is I think unique uh, specifically to USC. 
Well, let's, as a group, let's open that up. I mean, the idea of these students have fantastic choices, and in my personal opinion is that they cannot make a wrong choice as to what school they're going to go to, whether that be UCLA, Stanford, Berkeley, Caltech, uh, or even other schools outside of California. I mean, a lot of our students are going to be considering Harvard. They're going to be considering, um, you know, University of Illinois or Urbana-Champaign. They're going to be uh, considering Johns Hopkins, MIT, Georgia Tech, Cornell, Carnegie Mellon. Um, we know that those are the students that we've been admitted. We've admitted them. They're also admitted to these schools. What's the difference? You know, what what's what's the difference between USC education and those schools? Considering that most of you are recruiting at these schools, you have experience at this types of education. You're working in industry with people that have gone to these schools. What, what's your what's your biggest difference between USC and these places? So I I might chime in here a little bit. Obviously, like I I did go to those places, but the the reason that one of the, the key reasons I chose USC was a lot. So this kind of relates to what Craig, Craig said, breadth, but then I chose Viterbi because of some flexibility that I felt like I could kind of chart my own course a little bit. So I came in as a computer science and computer engineering major, and when it was time to register for classes, um, you know, I, I had been doing some thinking. I had considered maybe enrolling as a, a like with a business minor or something, but it went, when it came time to register for classes, I decided my major was going to be computer science and business administration. I didn't have to get any approval. They just said, hey, go ahead, register, and off I went. And that was, um, that was my major. And so um, being able to have uh, an engineering major combined with something else and having that flexibility was, was one uh, key differentiator for me. That's why I picked USC over some of the other schools that I was considering, because I, like, um, there are plenty of other good schools out there, but some of them have um, much more rigid kind of requirements. Great. Thank you. It looks like we might have lost uh, Jennifer. She, she wanted to have her internet connection drop out, so hopefully she'll come back in. Um, any other thoughts, guys? Yeah, um, I would also say that, it, um, I mean, in terms of uh, looking at different engineering schools, right? I mean, Paul, you named a number of really great places, but I mean, oh, I've said it um, before and I'll say it again now, you know, I, I just wish I had enough hours in the day to take advantage of everything that USC offers. And I think the access to these options and the access to all these services is what USC does, what Viterbi does better and what Viterbi does differently from other schools, right? A lot of other schools are focused on very large grad student populations, they're focused on making a name for themselves in other areas. And so sometimes undergrads don't get as um, as much attention or as much access as you might um, think. And but at USC, that's really not the case. Um, I felt like at Viterbi, I really had. I mean, I was so supported, and I just had the opportunity to, you know, do whatever I really wanted to do. And I was well supported um, in all ways. So that was what really differentiated, and that was the feeling I got. And I am. Sure. Absolutely happy with my decision. Right. We have we have a question that, that's similar to the one I just asked. It, it kind of changes the dynamic a little bit, but a student is basically arguing with their parents, and their parents believe that another school named here uh, as Illinois Urbana-Champaign is believed by the parents to be quote unquote more prestigious. Uh, and I think that this is, if we can blow this question out a little bit more to apply to everybody, I think uh, some people have this sense that some schools are more prestigious than others or more well-respected or something. Um, and how do we deal with, um, how do we deal with students in, that are trying to talk to their parents about, well, I think USC sounds right to me, even though they may historically believe that more uh, other universities have, have a different level of prestige? I think... For me, the undergrad experience, um, more than anything, really is about fit. Um, and I know that's that's kind of the you know the idea that maybe you know people might be trying to promote or that maybe some students might think their parents might not think the same thing. But for me, um, it really was all about fit, and I got a good feel from USC, and I knew that um, kind of moving forward, it, it would be more. And this is this is looking back, this has absolutely been true. Um, it's about your sort of personal journey and the decisions that you make along the way and the activities that you choose to engage in. Um, and 
USC opened up just a ton of new opportunities for me. I talked about Engineers Without Borders. Um, I talked about, you know, these internships, things like that. And it's more about the sort of the individual choices that you make along the way. And um, it, the undergrad experience really allows you to do that. And USC, um, I couldn't have asked for more opportunities coming from a place like USC. Great. Um, I just, Any thoughts? I just wanted to add uh, one thing that really helps with that is bringing them. Like, so, I, so when I was admitted, I said, oh, I, like, USC looks really interesting to me. Hey, Dad, you want to go check it out? That worked really well. Um, you, you get a chance to see it and see if it's a good fit, and your parents get, like, get to get a feel for it, too. And so, that, I mean, that's just one, one suggestion on that front. Yeah. I would actually agree with that. My, my parents and I were all sold on USC very early in the process um, after a visit. It's, it's very true. Um, and I would also say that, you know, it, it's an undergraduate experience, so you want to make sure that you're going to be happy for the four years or however long you're going to take to do it, right? But, I mean, the Trojan family goes beyond just that four years, and so you also really want to consider the value of that network, right? I mean, I think it's, it, it's really immeasurable, you know, and if you want to come back to Northern California or, you know, if you want to be based in, um, you know, Illinois or something like that, right? I mean, I think the value of the network might be different in different places, but... Um, you know, USA really has an unparalleled alumni base um, worldwide, and they have an enormous international base too. And I think um, the value of the friendships and the people that I've been able to meet through that, I mean, still really um, add quite a bit of value and happiness to my life now too. Cool. Yeah, I, I, I mean, my, my final thoughts on this whole idea of prestige is that all of these schools are prestigious. Students come out of every one of these institutions, the ones that I listed, um, and, and are very successful. Um, the, my typical rule of thumb is that there is no such thing as the best engineering school. There's no such thing as the most prestigious computer science program. Um, that's a bunch of junk, to be honest with you. Um, all of them are strong. All of them are good. Uh, to be honest, I don't believe that anybody can make a wrong choice here. The question is, what's the best one for you? What's the best one that you feel, and to borrow a phrase, I mean, Craig, David, I think you hit it on the head. What where do you fit the best? Where do you see the biggest opportunity for you to have the most opportunities? And that's not the same for everybody. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of a, a melding of the ideas that you have, the opportunities that you want, and the changes that you want to see in yourself. And um, if that's a USC, great. If it's not, then that's great too. You should find where that is. And that, that's what FIT is all about, finding the right mix of opportunities. Um, we have a question uh, from Victoria. Victoria's up there at Marin Catholic, and she's asked a, a bunch of questions. And um, the, the two different questions that are kind of polar opposites of one another. Um, do, uh, do most of the engineers join sororities or fraternities, the ideas of Greek life? Uh, I think this is related to that social-like question earlier that we had, but specifically sororities or fraternities. I don't think anyone here was Greek, um, but we could, we could talk about what you thought of the Greek system and... Is it something you have to do to have a social life? And the second question, if you guys want to jump in on this, is um, <laughs> are the dorms uh, quiet enough to study? So anybody? The, so I had a lot of... Oh. Depends on your roommate. <laughs> depends on your roommate. <laughs> yeah. I, I lived in Burncran and had a very good roommate, and so Burncran is... I thought it had the ideal kind of floor size. I would definitely recommend, like, if, if any of you are about to commit or you want to pick a place, Burn Cram was really good. Um, it was, uh, I considered it like a quiet suburb of like a, like a little bit more, uh, like, outgoing dorm or whatever. But uh, I, I definitely was able to, but I, I typically went to the library freshman year anyway. But that was just so that way I could be totally focused because there's a lot of fun things going on in the dorms. And so when someone knocks on your door, you know, to say, hey, let's go do something, you know, you want to be able to go do it. So I, I would kind of separate stuff out. But they're definitely, yeah, I, I would still say, yeah, it depends on your roommate. Yeah. And I, I think, uh, you know, if you, if you do end up at USC, you have the opportunity to make that decision. There, there are dorms ranging from very quiet to very outgoing and never quiet. So it, it kind of depends on, um, it's going to be a personal choice. 
I think in terms of where you want to live, um, and USC has the whole range of, of options. Um, in terms of uh, fraternity and sorority life, I, I guess we mentioned that well, I wasn't on, in, a, in a fraternity, and I guess none of us were in fraternities or sororities, but um, I, I definitely had a social life <laughs> outside of uh, outside of being in a fraternity. Sometimes we'd find ourselves, you know, down on the road where all the fraternities and sororities are, um, but you, the way that you know, you kind of find yourself making friends at USC. You, you you have friends in fraternities, you have friends in sororities, and everybody kind of mixes it up quite a bit. Um, and then I think David mentioned that we did our own parties. You know, later on, junior and senior year, once I had a pretty a pretty solid group of friends together too. So um, you can go that direction if you want to. It's not a requirement to have a social life, um, but it is, I believe, one of the one of the better fraternity sorority systems um, in the country. So I've heard. Uh, I think it's a fantastic one. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, the 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 stat is roughly I think twenty percent of USC students are are involved in Greek life. It's definitely not an overwhelming number. It's definitely a very vocal group. Uh, something that if you would like to be involved in, you definitely can. Um, but it's not something that it's something that you have to be involved in. Um, for the, anyone that ever is thinking about the ideas of Greek life, I always recommend to check it out and participate in the rush process to see whether it's for you or not. I think that any student will figure out very quickly whether they like it or not and decide whether it's something that they would like to spend some time in. Uh, but the majority of students you'll find are not involved, uh, but that doesn't mean that that's any indication of social life by any stretch of the imagination. I just want to add, yeah. um, maybe about half or a little less than half of my friends were in the Greek system, and I can say very definitively, like this, this well, okay, this doesn't apply to everybody, but generally speaking, those in the Greek system really, really like the Greek system. And of oh, my friends not in the Greek system, they all they do fine. But people like if that's your thing, you like it's a good place to be for. I would definitely say that. Sure. And I so did question, actually you, go ahead, Greg. Paul, you had mentioned uh, rushing and checking it out. I, I actually did rush. Uh, I think two or three times. Um, so I was definitely, I, I went for it, I, I checked it out and decided it wasn't necessarily the thing for me, but that's completely an option, even if you want to do it multiple times. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So you're, you're, you're a constant tourist there, that's good. That's good. That's good. Oh, yeah. that's a good thing. <laughs> um, we got a, a, another anonymous question here, uh, and this is one that says, to be honest, I'm a little intimidated by the extremely social nature of USC. Uh, I'm definitely a social person, but I prefer to hang out in my dorm or suite with people on my floor, and I also love to play video games. Um, what's the right place for me to live? Uh, I don't, to be honest with you, who, whoever is asking this question, um, and I can address you personally if you can tell us who you are, but um, there isn't a best place. Um, I don't believe that there is a more social dorm versus a more quiet dorm, mostly because the students that were there this year are not there next year. Uh, and this this process constantly changes. Um, where you find friends and where you find um, kind of your, your group and, and your fit and, and how that works is going to evolve over time. And this kind of goes back to the previous answers that both David and Craig gave about, well, it depends on who your roommates are. It depends on who your friends are. And you're going to find those friends through courses. You're going to find those friends through student organizations. You're going to find those friends in your residence hall. And the freshman year is always the hardest because you're developing an entire social network. Um, so, uh, could each of you address the idea that um, how do how do you how do you fit in? How do you find friends? Um, and is it extremely social? Uh, are there quiet people? Uh, I think that's a good question. All right, yeah. I, I can I can start again. Um, so, just in terms of how I found friends, and uh, so I'll talk a little bit about that, and then kind of a little bit about the the variety of like different like social butterfly versus kind of more quiet person. Um, so I, I, as I said, lived in this building called Burncrant. Um, I thought it was kind of an ideal size because I think there were maybe 30 people, 40 people on the floor. It's just enough where we were pretty cohesive. And so a lot of my friends throughout college, uh, like they were, they, were, they were friendships that I formed freshman year. And so you know, I went out and kind of explored the floor a little bit, and we all became best friends. Um, one of the like one of the guys on my uh, on my floor freshman year, we now work together. Um, I see a lot of like a lot of the guys from my floor all the time, um, and it kind of depends a little bit. So some like Parkside has like suites, and so maybe you'll be you'll you'll get to know the the friends in your suite, etc. But um, I, like I would say that like 
there were a lot of people on my floor who just had uh, like kind of smaller groups. They they would decide to kind of stick together, or there were you know there were some there was the second floor in my building, and it was a bunch of guys in computer science, and they like to play video games, and they just kind of played video games and hung out together, and it was like six of them, and they were just kind of always there. Um, and then just in terms of in terms of range, so I'm I'm not. I would say like the most stereotypical computer science person. I'm more social than average, I would say, but I certainly have my antisocial moments. But um, there's like there's a, there's a whole range of like you don't have to be a super social person to fit in. But, like again, this kind of goes to like diff there are all sorts of groups of people. Like I was on the triathlon team, and there were a few other organizations I was involved in. There's like all sorts of different kinds of people that you, you can seek out. And so, um, like, you don't have to fit into some sort of default personality. There, there are a lot of different kind of niches that you, that you can find. Yeah. Great. Yeah, Great. I mean, the freshman year experience, I mean, you're going to find different people to hang out with in your dorms, you know? I mean, um, you know, honestly, sometimes it was, you know, the South Park episode of the week was sort of the biggest draw on our floor in Trojan Hall, right? So you'd get like 15, 16 people all crammed onto two bunk beds, right? Like watching the thing, you know? And I mean, and that was fine, right? I also remember epic StarCraft tournaments going on and things like that. So it's not that you have to go out and, you know, always be partying and everything like that. Um, but, you know, I think also part of the, um, you know, making friends and um, learning the ropes and everything also started with my visit to USC during one of the previous USC um, events, and, you know, I was paired up with another engineer, and then so, you know, we also did some um, uh, ASBME, the Associate Students of Biomedical Engineering, we did a whitewater rafting trip before freshman year, so it was people of all different classes who went there too, so it was really helpful to know some upperclassmen who could kind of show you the ropes and who would also kind of help mentor you, you know, so um, there's both the informal and the formal structures there, right, so it's going to be different for everybody, but I would not worry that, you, you know, everybody's all super social all the time because sometimes my roommate and I, you know, we just kick back in our pajamas and have a pint of Ben and Jerry's and hang out and chat, you know, but you, you all need to decompress sometimes, so, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that, um, I, I think that people would be surprised as to how much college life is just hanging out, you know, talking until three in the morning with your friends, sometimes ideas grand ideas come out of it sometimes it's just complete junk um, but it's it's really just the finding friends and you're gonna find that no matter where you go um, if I can add my final two cents onto that question I would encourage whoever asked that question to not find a floor that you think is right for you uh, just pick one that the pick the housing that sounds the coolest to you and you're going to find a group of friends that's going to work best and more specifically college is about expanding your experiences and if you don't want that don't come to USC expanding your experiences is I think key to a USC education the fact that you're going to get to know music majors you're going to get to know cinema majors you're going to be very involved with engineering students obviously um, but you're going to be working and living with people that are going to be spanning the globe once you get out as alums uh, in industry and in graduate schools and that type of learning from different skill sets is one of the best parts about USC. Um, I think everybody can kind of, kind of share that, the fact that they learn something from their peers uh, and they don't tend to have some sort of homogeneous um, population that they just hang out with. And I think that's one of the best parts about USC. Um, we have a question, um, two questions that are very similar, so I'm going to try to uh, merge them together here so that we can help answer it. Sid asked one here about internships and jobs, what kind of companies come recruit USC computer science students. Um, but also, Michael asked a question about uh, one of the reasons that he's considering, because you know, obviously we're only talking to Northern California students right now, they're considering great schools in Northern California, Stanford, UC Berkeley. Um, they're thinking, why leave here? Because we got great schools, we got great companies up here. I, I hear that they only hire Stanford, UC Berkeley grads, um, what would you say is the culture around USC about the ideas of startups, about connections to high-tech industries, um, and, you know, why should I ever come down to Southern California if it looks like there's a path here in Northern California that I don't need to leave? So, for me, um, 
having grown up in Georgia, one one big thing that I, I think was extremely valuable to sort of my personal development. Hey, Jenny's um, back! Yay! <laughs> um, one thing that was valuable to my personal development, my professional development, and academic development was was changing parts of the country, and that was something I had uh, Georgia Tech basically, you know, in my backyard. Um, I could have gone 20 minutes down the road and spent 40, four years at Georgia Tech, but I, I actually sort of made a point to go somewhere else so that I could have that new experience and be exposed to new ideas. Um, and that really is powerful. I did it again when I went to Taiwan and lived there for a year, but just the the diversity that you run into, I think that is very powerful in generating new ideas kind of as you as you move forward. Um, and then again, I'll just mention this briefly because I talked about it before, but the, um, the emphasis that Viterbi puts on doing things um, in different parts of the school, taking classes in, in um, different parts of the school, in business, uh, in, for me, it was business, Chinese film, and dance. Um, that was a big thing and, and something that kind of stood out to me. Not only, you know, Viterbi doesn't only let you do those things, but they really strongly encourage it. Um, and that was kind of a distinguishing feature in there. Cool. Hey, um, I'm sorry to leave, but um, I have to get on a con call with Asia actually right now. So um, <laughs> I want to say thanks to all the uh, prospective students who have joined. And um, if you have any questions, I mean, you know, Paul's the man, but uh, if you have any specific things, there's tons of alumni like us who can help answer these questions. So. Um, Good luck with your searches, and uh, have a great evening, and fight on. Tracy, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Sorry you have to head out. We're going to wrap up in a couple minutes here, but fight on, Tracy, and um, good luck with your conference call with Asia. <laughs> thanks. Talk to you later. Have a good night. Okay. So again, the question was, because Jenny just joined in a little bit ago, the ideas of connections to high tech and startups, and why would I ever leave Northern California? Because there's great universities up here. If I'm well, being in the tech industry myself, sorry I, I cut off, I had to reinstall the plugin, um, but I'm glad I'm back. Uh, basically, I mean, working in the tech industry, I actually recently saw that USC has a program, um, I believe it's a, a program that allows entrepreneurs and startups um, within Viterbi to get started and stay in LA, and there's um, a dedicated program. Paul, do you know what that's called? It's a yeah. Sony. We have, we have a number of different programs. First of all, the, the Viterbi Student Institute for Innovation, or because we love acronyms, we call it VSI Squared, and that is running the Massey Entrepreneurship Prize Competition, which is a business plan competition for engineering students, in addition to the 12-week accelerator, which is the Viterbi Startup Garage, which you might be referring to, in addition to other speakers, mentors, workshops, and students can get involved as early as freshman year as part of a brand new junior fellows program, starting freshman year and then having access to these types of uh, resources. And yeah. David's actually really involved in this as well, too. Awesome. I think that's amazing because, I mean, now being in San Jose area where it's, you know, startup world, I can honestly say that, you know, Southern California, LA, USC is very much involved in that community. And uh, especially with engineers being on the forefront of startups in tech, I think that's it's a huge advantage. Um, myself, uh, going with Cisco, and I also had an industrial systems engineering background, obviously, in my degree, but I also took some classes in the IT program, so I had some exposure to SAP, as well as uh, opportunities to get internships and go into consulting, specifically around uh, IT in that industry. So there's emphasis in the curriculum, um, in the academic side as well, that focus a lot on technology technology which fosters you know that innovation and that thought process so outside of just those uh, examples I think there's there's a lot going on in Viterbi that allows for that and just on my pitch for Cisco I know that um, the iPodia is a class that uses Cisco telepresence so Paul next time we'll be hopefully using Cisco video conferencing <laughs> <of Google>, but <laughs> um, I think that you know it's, it's great to see the university really adopting technology and in the iPodia class, if, if we didn't talk about it already, it connects via telepresence or video conferencing. It connects universities in other parts of the world. And the ISC students, because it's an ISC 400 level class, they're able to collaborate and do a project with students that are global. And I think that's so key in the world that we live in. And being an engineer at Cisco, it's very much you know collaborating and knowing how to work with people from different cultures, from other parts of the world, getting on the con call late at night with Asia Pac, for example, and I think that having that in um, in school and your undergrad experience is really, and USC, Viterbi specifically, has really adopted 
technology to foster that that collaboration outside of just USC's borders, which is great. Great, David. Sure. Um, so I think the question about you know why why come to USC when there are a lot of great opportunities for kind of techies or people interested in startups in the Bay Area. I think th I think that's a good question. I can say. Um, why I chose USC, given that, and then I can kind of give some examples of how, how things worked out. So I wanted to kind of get out of my bubble. So I grew up in the Bay Area, uh, like kind of all over, all around the Bay, and I, I like I had originally decided to go to a different state, but then when it came down to it, I really liked USC, and I considered Southern California effectively a different state. So I went with it. Um, and just to kind of dispel the myth that tech companies or whatever don't come to USC, I thought I would say, so I have friends who either got jobs, offers, or internships at Google, Apple, Zynga, Yahoo, Cisco, EA, Microsoft, Amazon, a lot of games companies in LA. These are like, with, this is within my close group of friends. I had an offer to go work at Apple, um, which I ended up turning down um, my senior year. And so, and, and then in terms of startups, there's a really big culture of startups at, at USC, specifically within Viterbi. So I know a number of friends who started companies uh, out of USC. Um, there are a lot of people who uh, participate in the, the computer science games program and make games and then like basically either turn that into like mini game studios or sell them. There are a lot of people who start other um, businesses out of the computer science department. So for myself, so I, I started a company, so I built an app the sum, my summer after my freshman year, and that eventually kind of evolved into my company. And senior year, I had the choice between go, go work at a conventional tech company or try to build a company, uh, try, try, to, try to build the company that I started with some, some friends from Viterbi. And we decided to, to kind of go ahead with it. And so, you know, fast forward, you know, with, with a startup, you know, you're kind of just always hanging on for survival. So if you can say you have another year left, you're in good shape. So I can tell you, we have another year left. Um, four of our, so we have some investors in the company. Four of them are actually uh, Viterbi alumni. So four alumni from USC, Viterbi invested in the company, um, along with a number of other investors like uh, BMW, the car company, and a bunch of other ones. But the, um, there's definitely a, a culture around startups at, at USC, and I like. I certainly like. I had a great time finding people to work with at USC for my company, and I, it certainly didn't hold me back at all. And like you think about the MSA prize competition and all these other things, all these other programs, there are, there are a lot of opportunities. Even even with within ACM, which was the, the computer science student organization, we would hold programming contests where students would make a project in a weekend, and worst case scenario, they have something that they can talk about in a job interview, which is really valuable because they actually built something. But best case scenario, and I've seen this happen, people launch companies out of what they've done in a, like, in a weekend programming contest. So this is definitely a part of the culture if you seek it out, and if, you, if this is something that you, you want to do. Um, if that like startups or tech, tech companies are interesting to you, there there are definitely opportunities at the Turbine. Perfect. Yeah, I've been uh, usually those programming competitions are in the classrooms right outside my office, and I come back in on Monday morning after you guys have been in there for forty eight hours, and oh my god, <laughs> man! <it's laughs> you lock a bunch of computer programmers in a room for forty eight hours, and it's it's not a pretty sight on Monday. But <laughs> also. Real quick, I, the the Chirby Startup Garage that uh, you guys had mentioned—that's a new program, right? That's yeah, that's brand new. So uh, Stanford, I guess you guys are kind of looking at the the Bay Area versus the SoCal. Stanford has StartX. I don't know if you're familiar familiar with what that is, but it's like a startup accelerator. And when I read that article, this is Viterbi's first year of implementing that that startup garage. I'm jealous, and I wish I was down there because applications, you know, gets more and more competitive every year. So if this is the first year that it's kind of going into effect, then the first people who jump on that are going to have a huge advantage. So that's actually an opportunity. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. One more question, and then we're going to sign off. I know you guys, are, we've gone a little late here, but we've gotten so many questions, we're not, we're not even hitting half of them. And I apologize for those that have just jumped in and started throwing questions at us right now, but we're a little backlogged. Um, the, 
the idea of, we talked about Northern California, the idea about tech startups and Silicon Valley, um, and knowing that, yeah, of course, USC students work up there. Um, but there's another question, which is the UC system. It's, it's a public school system. Um, we're a private school system. It, for most students, is going to be um, more money to attend USC. So what's the benefit of going, what's the difference between the UC system, something like UC Berkeley, UCLA, a fantastic school? fantastic place, students are very successful, why come to USC? I, I felt like uh, one thing that stood out to me, kind of again, uh, the personal factor, I think, uh, in some cases at schools like that, there are just so many so many people. I know it varies school to school, but um, when I visited USC and when I visited Viterbi, um, I felt like attention was being paid to me and my needs were being taken care of and, you know, I, my questions were answered and uh, it was it was a really good experience, and I felt like I was already kind of at home, um, and I didn't get that feeling from some of your bigger public schools. Um, that was one thing that stood out to me. Okay. For a long time growing up, I wanted to go to that other school in L.A., and I remember uh, doing a visit and sitting in on, I think it was a, a calculus class, and the class size was as big as my entire high school back home in Sacramento. So I went to a, a small high school of about like 700 um, total students and at UCLA the calc class was as big as that and I just couldn't imagine being in a calc class and getting the personal attention and having the professor know me by name if the class size was that big. Uh, when I went to USC and did a class visit it was a much smaller environment. I could tell that professors um, had relationships with their with their students in terms of knowing them by name and, and knowing what their interests were. I felt like there were more opportunities for research, uh, for getting help in office hours, going into a professor's office, which I've done many times, and asking questions. And I think that personal touch, as Craig mentioned, was really key for me, especially coming from a smaller high school environment and and having been through private education practically my whole life, I think that was the, the best step for me and, and what met my needs at the time. Great. Thank you. Um, so I, I also have a, a kind of a list of things. Uh, so there's I wrote down like five of them. Uh, so I, I felt like USC had uh, sort of, it, so USC has the, the resources of a, of a large school, but when you want it to, it has the feel of a small one. And so what that meant was, so now kind of going down the list, um, I, so for the network alone, like that, that is a big deal, out of school. Um, while in school, kind of access to faculty is a really key one. So you're not, uh, you know, at, a, at, a, at a lot of big schools, the, the faculty tend to be very distant. I'm, I am friends with a lot of my former professors to, to this day. Um, so that's another one. When you have access to faculty, it's a lot easier to do things like research as an undergraduate or like there are a bunch of other opportunities there. Um, and then uh, getting out on time is also a nice one. Um, like at, <laughs> at Viterbi, like, you know, you, you, you're able to get into the classes that you want to take. You, you can get into the classes that you want to take and, or that you need to take, and you can get into the classes that you want to take, and you can get out on time. So I like I didn't want to stay past like I want I wanted to have a four year college experience and then get out and do stuff, and so th those were kind of my my top reasons. That's that's perfect. And and if I can jump in and, and it's a summary of what you guys all said. Size is key. We're smaller than all of them. If students choose to join us, they'll be one of about four hundred students across 10 engineering disciplines in their freshman year and that ratio does not exist in any other school. Um, the idea that there's a personal feeling because of that, there's only 2,000 engineering students university-wide across 30 different engineering majors. Uh, this is a small place with incredible resources. Um, that said, that doesn't mean everybody will be more successful because they come to USC, but if that's what they're looking for, if that's what they'll benefit, that's what they're going to get. They're going to get some fantastic experience. Um, this choice is incredibly challenging. I don't envy your position in having to choose between universities, especially considering the competitive schools that you've been admitted to. Um, I know it's rough. I know it's a hard choice. I know that you won't make a wrong choice, um, but one of the best things that I could tell you is this live chat was scheduled last week 
I happened to email these alums, a few others, if they had to cancel last minute because of business opportunities. But the fact that we were able to bring in these fantastic alums just at the last minute to talk to you, specifically because they're, you're, they're involved in the kind of that Northern California scene, I don't think another school can do that. Um, and as quickly and as easily as just me sending an email to, to students that I knew and had relationships with, uh, all the ones that we talked to today, I knew starting in high school. I remember, Jenny, I remember interviewing you in the Sacramento Courtyard Marriott uh, and, and, and going through that process. And Craig, I remember when you visited USC for the first time and talking to your parents and also talking to you in Atlanta. Um, mm -hmm. I We talk a lot about the idea of Trojan family, but I truly believe and live it every single day. Um, I, I, I wanted to just take this opportunity to thank you guys for coming. Also, Tracy, who was here earlier. Reed, again, consultant at McKinsey & Company, who was going to be joining us but had to back up the last minute because of a conference call. Farzana Ansari, who is a PhD candidate currently at UC Berkeley and wanted to talk about those differences, but unfortunately she's presenting at a conference tomorrow and had to do some last-minute work. And also Amy Lynn, one of the co-founders of Ed Cannabis, a startup up north that is doing some really cool stuff with education and technology. If you can check out Ed Canvas, Amy would be would appreciate that. But she couldn't join us for a last minute investor dinner. So again, you know, Jenny, Craig, David, thank you so much for participating in this. I truly appreciate it. Um, for those of you watching, these these this is who you're going to be if you want to come to USC. And I think that's what the best part about it is that they're fantastic people. They did great things in high school like you. They came to USC and did amazing things at USC. And now they're continuing that path of amazing kind of accomplishments and just, just being cool people, to be honest with you, uh, in their futures wherever they are, in graduate school and industry, etc. You have a tough choice. I hope that you're going to come visit campus if you haven't done so already. We have many different campus visit programs like Explore USC, Preview USC. You can check out more information about some of our campus visit programs at viterbi.usc.edu slash admit2013. If you have more questions, you can always email me, paul.ledesma at usc.edu. For all of you in Northern California, I will be flying up there this weekend. I'm going to be in Sacramento on Saturday at the Sheraton on J Street from 2 to 4. We're going to have a reception there, so if you're admitted, you want to come by and talk, let's talk. Uh, for those of you in the San Francisco Bay Area, I'll be at the Marriott San Mateo on Sunday from 2 to 4. You can come by and chat. We'll also have a few other alums there as well. So please, come by and chat. Let's talk about it. Let's figure out what your best choice is. And if you want to come to USC, we want you to come to USC. Once again, uh, thank you, Jenny, David, Craig. I really appreciate it. And to everyone out there, I really appreciate appreciate you joining us and uh, from all of us here and, and across the country. Jenny, it's really late where you are in Raleigh, North Carolina, but uh, fight on. Fight on. <laughs>